Tell you like I got a question. Who's who's your husband? I don't have a husband. You say you don't have a husband. No, I'm single. God is my man. Right, right. God is her man. God is God is your man, right? Yeah. Right. It, your man should be the 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 guys that you see on this earth right now. You understand? Not somebody in heaven, right? You gonna you gonna have the Most High. You understand? You gonna uh, have an intercessor, Christ. You understand? But Christ is dealing with the men that's setting this whole world in order today. You understand? And th these men are, are are really standing right before you. And they're teaching you, you understand, how to keep God's commandments. Everything God wants you to do, we reading for you right here in this Bible. So, right, so, first thing you got to do is apply these things right here. Right? Right, so you, you made a uh, mention of something else. Who? Who, that's your boyfriend right there? You got something? No, no, go ahead. What you got? I got you. That's what's over. I ain't going to do it. Okay, I mean, you should stay because you're listening. They're not listening right now. So you should let them take the kids and you should stay. Continue to get built up. Because you need to change, sister. It's a lot of things you need to change. And every man is not going to teach you the message we're teaching you right now. All right? You understand what I'm saying? So you need to keep your child over here. Keep learning. All right? Or send your child with your, with your uh, boyfriend or whoever and continue to learn how to repent and get your spirit right. That's it, the Lord. That's what you need to do. You got something? 1 Corinthians 11 and 8. 11 started 8. Let's do that. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 8. Started verse, started verse 6. Verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 6. Come on. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 6. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn, right, right, right. But, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because this shit. Okay, uh, let's let's get to the point. Jump to verse 8. Verse 8. Yes, verse eight. Come on. Verse 8, for the man is not of the woman. So the Bible says that the man didn't come from the woman. You understand? Come on. But the woman of the man. The woman came from who? Who did the woman come from? The woman came from the man. Y'all know that story, right? In the Garden of Eden, right? Took the rib, made the woman, right? Was it the man's rib or the woman's rib that he took? The man's rib and created what? The woman, right? Come on. Neither was the man created for the woman. But the woman for the man. Because the woman was created for who? For the man, right? So the perfect order there is for a righteous woman, right? To be a help to who? A righteous man. And that righteous man, right? Be a help to who? Christ, you understand? And Christ is a help to who? His father. You understand? That's the perfect order that we have, all right? That's, that's, that's the true spirit, all right, of this Bible. All right, that's the unity that you've heard about. All right, but it all starts with what? The Most High God, Christ in submission to Him. All right, the man, the man in submission to who? Christ. The woman, the woman in submission to who? The man, the men. You understand? So you should have righteous men around you teaching you God's laws, what to do to get your spirit right. All right, and you should be able to change your conditions by just obeying the instruction that these righteous men give you today all right and then what's the law gonna do he gonna send you a man he gonna send you a husband somebody that's gonna take care of you according to the bible that's what will happen all right that's how you get right with the law all right so even our sisters today should still be in submission and subjection to a man so no sisters just be out here on their own all right you should be in subjection to your father or you should be in subjection to your husband or you should be in subjection to the to the men that your father was around to the men that the the commute the men and the, the leaders of the community today all right because in times past our families were righteous all right now our families is full of niggas and hoes today all of us you understand today so we don't have a, a culture or righteous community family so on and so forth to rely on all right but today we got leaders within the community that's rising up to be a father, to be a mother, you understand? To be an uncle, to be an aunt, to all of us today. We got grandfathers, grandmothers, so on and so forth, all right? I'm not talking about by the blood, I'm saying through the spirit, the right. spirit of the Lord. He put this spirit on the men, the women that we have today on this earth to be that for you in righteousness. Those are the men that you will submit to today, all right? So you can't just uh, use that as an excuse, all right? Since I'm single, uh, I'm just dealing with the Lord and that's it. Nah, you still shit, all right, good. Good.
that's not the spirit that you have. You still should be in submission and subjection to who? The men that are around you that's rising up in the community to teach you, all right, to repent, to teach you to keep God's laws, to teach you to keep God's commandments. You understand? Those are the men that you need to reverence. Those are the men that you need to honor. You understand? That's how you do that without a husband. And then what's the Lord going to do? Send you one of them righteous men. All right? To take care of you. To provide for you. You understand? But first, you got to get your situation right with the Lord. Right. That's what you got to do first. All right? Now, get me that in uh, 1 John chapter 2. All right? 1 John chapter 2. Because you made a statement earlier. And you said that, uh, come as you are. Do you still believe that based off what we read? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All praise. All praise. That's good. That's good. You're learning, sister. All praises to the most high. Now, there's a lot of things that we've been taught in addition to come as you are, all right, that's not true according to the Bible, all right? One of those things is this right here. Read what you got. One, two, and three. Yes, sir. The book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 3. Come on. And hereby we do know that we know him. So most of us say, look, I got a personal relationship with the Lord, right? I got a personal relationship with the Lord. Well, what does that mean? The Bible says, this is how you know that you know the Lord. You following me? We. We do know that we know him. Come on. If we keep his commandments. If we do what? Keep his commandments. So we know we have a personal relationship with the Lord if we're doing what? How do we know we're having a, we have a personal relationship with the Lord? How do we know that? You have to obey what? All right, that's that's a good start. Because the Ten Commandments, all right, is a, a summary of or summation of all the commandments you read about in the Bible. But guess what? There's many more commandments, right? We Like we read about about the pants. You understand what I'm saying? So where, where, where is that in the Ten Commandments? All right? It's there. It's there. It's just not explicitly said there. All right? We have thou shalt not commit adultery. That's there. Right? Don't the, the way that you dress, don't that lead to adultery? Can that lead to adultery? How you come out the house every day? You understand? What you uh, choose to reject, God says don't have any gods before him. So when you say, nah, it's my birthday, I'm going to do what I want to do today. Aren't you putting a God before the Lord? Aren't you doing that? Yes. Right? And what does that lead to? You committing all types of sin. You understand what I'm saying? So it may not explicitly say, uh, thou shalt not or it might not explicitly say that a woman can't wear pants in the Ten Commandments but it's covered there all the laws is covered in the Ten Commandments alright that's just a summation of everything we gotta do on this earth to call ourselves a respectable righteous people today you got a question what you got but what if you had um, nice clothes and somebody's you know, stole stuff from you and you gotta start all over again. What if you did what? And you just have to wear what you have until you can, can get what, what you used to have, what's been taken from you. And your clothes got stolen? Yeah, but stuff got taken away from you that you used to wear nice stuff and not stuff like this. Right. And you just have to wear what you have that's been, that you've been blessed with. Right. You know, because I like to wear long stuff. Okay, I don't all right. Have done anymore. Understood, understood. So that's the good spirit to be in. There's there are certain situations or circumstances that will leave you destitute, right? As a people. That's really where we are today. So what we have to do, Sirach chapter 15, verse 20. What we have to do, all right, is start from where we are today. If you only have one dress, you understand? Then make sure. You wear that one dress until you can get another one. All right? And then when you get two, wear those two dresses until you get another one. Read what you got. The book of Sirach, chapter 15, verse 20. He hath commanded no man to do wickedly, neither have he given any man license to sin. Right. So what does that mean? You're not going to find any one of us to tell you that it's okay to, to dress like a man. We're not going to tell any of our women that. Nobody. You're not going to find any one of us to say, yeah, it's okay that you continue to dress like a man. Just like I'm not going to tell my brothers that it's okay for you to dress like a woman. I can't do that. All right? All we can tell you is to repent. All right? 
and we're going to show you the right way so that you can learn to apply what God is telling you to do. All right. God says, look, woman, you can't wear pants. You like, oh, all I got is, is, is pants right now. All right. What do you need to do? Well, I have a couple of dresses. No, not you, just in general. If that happens, what do you need to do? If you're in a situation where all you have is pants, you don't have no dresses at home, right? You, we read out the Bible, God says don't do that. God says all women need to dress like women. They need to have modest clothes on, right? You don't have any of those things. You're just learning this right now, all right? No, not you personally, but let's say a person is just learning these things right now. What should their next course of action be? What should they, how, how should they move forward or proceed from there? What should they do? That's a question I have. What you think? Say it again. Change her She should change what? Change her lifestyle. Change her lifestyle? She should. Right? And she should do it. She should do it quickly. Right? She should do it quickly. That's not that person who wants to change it. Yeah, uh, Psalm chapter 160. I know I do. No, 119 verse 6, 63, I think. Say it again. I said, I know I do. Right, so if you don't have these clothes in your closet right now, you understand? Yeah, 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 yeah. If you don't have your if you don't have these clothes in your closet right now, then you need to work to get them in your closet immediately. You understand? I had it and I shouldn't have to buy it all over again. It got taken from me. Okay. All right. They may have been stolen from you. All right, but you need to work on getting those clothes as soon as possible. Okay. You don't know when the when when the Lord's coming back. Oh, All right. God is coming real soon. That's that's right. Look, listen. Let me let me share something with you. And your name was one more time. My name is Laverne. Laverne and Jay. Let me share something with you one time because that's our typically our mindset is we're always set on showing somebody a, a certain persona that we want to uphold. But Christ wouldn't have us do that. So in the case that. Um, uh, uh, our clothes, uh, we lose all our clothes in a house fire, somebody rob our house, steal everything. In these type of cases, yes, yeah, it's, it's some diary or some, um, some, some, you, 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 that's, there's some concern for what you have to wear in that, right? But I want you to understand what Christ tells us to think about and how to look at that whole apparel and, and what we have to dress in our, um, in those situations where we lack, in our poverty, in the situation where a house burned down, those, those, more dire things, right? You got it? Come on, watch this. This is Christ speaking. Show the sisters the red leather. Yes, letters. So the red letter in the Bible, we all know that that's, that, that means Jesus Christ is speaking, right? So let's see what Jesus Christ has to say about some of these situations or how we should look at our clothing or understand or think about our clothing in this present time. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life what ye shall eat uh -huh. or what ye shall drink Come on. nor yet for your body uh -huh. what ye shall put on uh -huh. is not the life more than meat meaning what he told you to do is more important than all those things that you put on your clothes on your body than the, than, the, than all the things because ain't nobody hungry you can look at us we we you know i ain't calling nobody fat but we ain't missing no meals you understand what i'm saying so read it again what christ said yes sir it's not the life more than me uh -huh. and because the, that's what we tend to focus on god say do this but i ain't you know what i'm saying but i got what about if this happened but hold on but the house burned down but hold on but the that's what we do and even if the house ain't burned down even if ain't nobody steal it that's what our mind gonna say right. but what about this and what about that so he said what now it's not the body more than me uh -huh. and the meaning it's not your body more than just to put food in it's more to your body than just that alone, right? Come on, excuse me. It's not the life more than me Come on. and the body than raiment. Come on, and the body, it's not your body more important to have more to do with the Lord than just to put clothes on or just right. to focus about the the, 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 the the many apparels or changes of apparel that you have. It's more important than that. Your body is a vessel, is a temple of God. Right. Meaning it should be keeping what God said to do in it, with it. Come on. Behold the fowls of the air, uh -huh. for they sow not, neither do they reap. Hold on. So behold the birds. Are you not better than the birds? It said they sow not, neither reap. But every morning, come on. Nor gather into barns. Uh -huh. Meaning they ain't got no bank account. 
Are they putting all their food and money into to make sure that, well, what if this happened? And what if this happened? And, what, and all these worries and cares. So why are you thinking and worried and making excuses for the things that God told you to do? Right. We have no excuse. We have no license to sin. Right. Come finish on. It off, finish it off. Oh, come on. Finish it off. Boy, take ye thought for Raymond. Uh -huh. Consider the lilies. Consider the lilies, the flower, the, the, the flowers laying in the dirt of the ground. Come on. Of the field. Uh -huh. How they grow. They toil not. Uh -huh. Neither do they spin. Meaning they, they grow big. You think they saying that they going out and getting the water? You think they, hey, farmer, come put some water on me. Baby, what I got to do for you today to make sure I get some water? They ain't doing nothing. They, not, they toil not. They work not. They have no care for their living. They know that the living God is going to feed them and make sure they grow up. Come on. And yet, I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you as long as you see this grass look at the grass the dirt look at the weeds look at the trees look at the the, the sky the clouds above god is telling you as long as you see that if you keeping his commandments he's going to make sure you are right just like the trees just like the birds in the sky you good because you better than all of that it was made for you that's what jesus the christ just told you come on Come last, on, you come verse. back. Yeah, he can deal with it. Yes, sir. Last, last verse. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, ye of little faith, therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Right, so you don't think, take thought about, well, you know, hypothetically speaking, what if this or what if that, or, you know, uh, 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 all my clothes was, was burnt. What if my house burned down and I ain't got no clothes left? You understand? You don't want to, you don't want to, you, you got to always know if the Lord allows this calamity to happen to you, the faith that you have in him, all right, he, the Lord's going to take care of you. You understand? Finish that up. Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Is that it? Yes, sir. All right. So the Lord's going to make sure that you clothe. All right. Get that in Psalms for me. Chapter 119. All right. And this is all in the same spirit. Yeah. All right. So same spirit. No license to sin. So regardless of circumstances, situations, we're not going to give anybody permission to break God's laws. All right? Before we get that, Matthew chapter 5. Hold that. We just, we, I can't give anybody permission to do that, regardless of the circumstances. All I can do is teach you the laws. All right? You got to bring forth the change. You got to work it out. You got to figure it out. All right? Think about those times where you ain't, you won't have the money to pay the light bill. Right? But you came up with it. You made it happen. You ain't have a ride to the club. You understand? How you get there? You made it happen. You had faith that you was going to get to that club. You had faith you was going to get home too. You understand? Faith in all of that. You was going to pull up that night. Right? You was going to get your mind right. You was going to do all of that. You ain't know how you was going to do it. But you, you, you made it happen. You had faith. And you made it happen. So how much more in righteousness? How much more in righteousness? Read what you got. 16. Book of Matthew. Oh, 5 and 17. Book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. So we can't, we're not coming to destroy anything that's been established. All right, we're going to reiterate all the laws that you read about from the beginning of the Bible all the way to the end. Come on. Or the prophets. I am not come to destroy to fulfill. All right, Psalms chapter 119, verse 60. Come on. Psalms chapter 119, verse 60. Read. I made haste and delayed not. What did the Bible say? I made haste. No, I took my time. I made haste. If you make haste doing something, right, what does that look like? Describe it to me. If you want to clean your room up in haste, right, how fast are you going to do that? I can't hear you. No, you're not going to take your time. You're doing it in haste. Right. Haste means you're rushing. You're doing it real fast. You're doing it real quick. You understand? She said it. What'd you say? You're going to get it done fast. Read that part again. I made haste. The Bible says make haste. Right? We're going to command you to do that. All right? We're going to say, hey, make haste to keep the commandments. Hurry up. We ain't got a lot of time left. 
All right? We ain't got a lot of time left. Today is the best day for you to get your life right with the Lord. It ain't a better time than now to come into the knowledge of this truth. It's not a better time than right now. All right? So should you delay? No. You should hurry up. Make haste. Come on. And delay not to keep thy commandments. To do what? To keep thy commandments. So you got to make haste to do wickedness? No. You understand? No. Make haste to do evil? No. no. All right? No. Make haste to do what? To do good. What's good according to the Bible? Give me that Romans chapter 7. What? You got to make haste to do good. The Bible is saying the same thing from beginning to end. So you're right. 100% right. Yes. Make haste to do good. What's that look like? Come on. The book of Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Read. Wherefore the law is holy. And the commandment holy and just and good. The Bible says that God's commandments are good. So you got to make haste to keep God's commandments. That's what's going to make you good today. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.